Hello and welcome to another episode of Good Brews, Bad Views, the podcast where we find out if great beer makes bad movies any better. I'm your host, Max Nestorowicz, and as always, joined by my co-host, James Thorpe. Yep. And Ryan Everhart. Yep. And today we have our first returning guest to the podcast. We're here every week. <laughs> You're the worst. Regrettably. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I'm talking about our good friend, last seen on the episode for Van Helsing, Jess Seabrig. (laughs) Hello, welcome back. Yes. So, uh, Jess, you actually are the selector of this week's movie. Uh, We asked you to come back and uh, had you give us a couple choices. And um, yeah, we're doing Small Soldiers this week. Small Soldiers, guys. Now, this is a movie I saw in the theaters. Yeah, I saw it. As did I. Did you also see it? I think so. Wow. Yeah, because I I was about going into fourth grade at the time, so I was all about this movie. And I thought it was pretty cool too when I was eight. Yeah, yeah. Um. So Jess, how have you been since the last time you were on the podcast? Uh. Well, I've I've been uh still like working on my art, and I got two new kittens, uh, who are bundles of joy, and (laughs) I love them very much. And their names are Sir Bundle and Choo Choo. And That's excellent. They're really cute. And you should post some pictures of my kittens when you upload this. You just have to send me some pictures and <laughs> I will post them on our various social media things. They're so pride and joy. Yes. yes. <laughs> so Small Soldiers, um, available on Amazon Prime. And um, we are queued up about 21 seconds in. The DreamWorks SKG logo has just kind of appeared on the screen. So if you're watching along... Hit play now. It begins. This is like a very prototypical DreamWorks movie. If you want to describe a DreamWorks movie to me. A live action DreamWorks movie. This nails it. I mean, this hits everything you're going for. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, that's uh, it's interesting you bring up live action. Like how much live action stuff did DreamWorks like have they been doing recently? Not much. Mm -mm. It's mostly been computer animation. No, once they hit Shrek, they were like, (laughs) yeah, all CGI all the time. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) This hey, is way cheaper. Time to shake that money tree. Yeah. <laughs> but this is at a Oof. point in CGI where it's like it's passable. Yeah, I felt like this aged pretty well, like as far as the visual effects go. I agree. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of practical effects, I, but, that's true. but the computer generated, yeah. generated I, ones. I aren't think that bad. the fact that a lot of the CGI is um, this reminds is me of cartoon or, or is is the toys. Is that that's what it make what that's what makes it age so well as it does? Yeah. Right, because yeah. you're not dealing it's with the like Uncanny Valley effects. stuff. Uh, I just want to say this introduction, like this opening scene, kind of reminds me of Escape from New York's opening scene. Oh god! <laughs> yeah, like there's a there's a lot of like just straight up satire in this movie mm-hmm. yeah. that I didn't get watching yeah, this I was movie eight, twenty I had years no ago. Idea, but, like, yeah. As an adult, I'm like, oh okay, I get what you're doing with this. Like, mm-hmm. I especially like love yeah. how like the uh, commandos like just <laughs> literally take all their lines are basically like from like other war movies. Right. Oh yeah. It's yeah. Insane. They're all just so, action movie quips. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like, I actually think that it's really funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I, I put this list, like, on this list because it was, like, I thought it was going to be bad. Mm-hmm. But I found it to be totally passable, and I actually kind of enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, this is an entertaining bad movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Any so movie with David Cross is This okay. is my right. first David Cross memory, probably. Yeah. Oh. Same. Followed closely by Scary Movie would be my... Oh, Jay Moore. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, well, he's in Scary Movie, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, th- those are both very. There's a lot of forehead on this screen right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> too many, too many head. <laughs> David Cross's lips appear very pink for much of this movie, and it distracts me. I mean, this movie is very saturated. Maybe that's why he has a full beard, or, mm-hmm. or, or excuse me, a, a goatee now, just to because it upsets his lips from his Jolie esque lips. Hmm. Mr. Mars. Are they walking onto a porn set here? Yeah. Well, there's some big shoulder pads. <laughs> yep. There are a lot of really weird pieces of art in this hallway for a mm. toy company. Mm. Yeah, it's like so fancy. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, the filmmakers talked with um, Mattel about like how toy companies like work and uh, oh, really? how toys so are made and stuff. <laughs> so yeah, they supposedly did like some legit research. So I, w- I would not be surprised if this was just like a slightly mocked up, like, actual toy office. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying it is, but I would not be surprised. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And here we have Dennis Leary. Right. Yeah. 
which I did not recognize as this young. Yeah, this is for sure my first experience with him. <laughs> that suit is just an awful collection of colors. What that the hell? Blue, gold, there? and purple tie. It's like someone took the the colors off the foil like insignia on a baseball card and turned it into a suit. Ugh. Was this was Dennis Leary's tie textured? Did anyone else see that? Did it have treads like a tire? <laughs> Can I it's just got say something I on it. really like Erwin? <laughs> oh yeah. He's endearing. He's so good. <laughs> it is, on that picture. It's, you can have, you can take that home. Yeah, and, yeah. It's like so cute. <laughs> his, his befuddlement is very endearing. Yeah, good drawer. He's, he's got a good heart. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ooh. The blue part is the land, as yeah. you know. Uh, thank you for making that joke. You're welcome. I was going to make the same joke. <laughs> yeah. So while David Cross spills his spaghetti all over the table, <laughs> um, what are we drinking today, guys? You brought us a wonderful thing, Max. I did. I brought M43, the one of the, I guess, hot new beers around Michigan from uh, Old Nation Brewery out of... My label is cut off, so I cannot read where this beer is from. All right, I might have to pass you a different can. Yep. Uh, while, while we look it up, and Jess... And got a baby beer. For yes. Someone who doesn't like beer. Yes. Last time Jess was on, she did not. Uh, Jess is not a beer person, more of a cider person. So I figured I would try to find something that would maybe suit her tastes because I have a tendency to, or a, a knack for doing that, I guess. Mm. So we went with Pool Time by Bell's Brewery. Their new Belgian wheat with cherries in it. It's yeah, pretty um, good. Pretty excited. How um, how do you like it though, Jess? I um, it tastes like beer to me. <laughs> okay. So it's gonna get points off for that automatically, <laughs> like out of hand. But um. It's definitely drinkable. I've taken more than one sip of it since we started, so okay. that's going to be a plus. That's a bonus. <laughs> yep. Um, so the brewery is Old Nation Brewing Company. Okay, yep. I was right about that. Out of Williamston, Michigan. Williamston, Michigan, yes. And so the M43 probably refers to the 43rd parallel, which I assume is where this brewery is located because the M, the 45th parallel is up in Gaylord, Michigan, which is mm-hmm. near the top of the Lower Peninsula. So this is a New England-style IPA. So it's got a def- definitive, like, hazy appearance. James even said it kind of looks like the beer mosses we had yeah. for uh, Valentine's Day. Right? Oh, oh, I've heard about hazy beers. Hazy? Uh, oh, really? They're, like, what? really trendy right now. They are very trendy right now. <laughs> so, like, I've heard from multiple people that this beer was worth uh, seeking out, and I found three cans of it at mm-hmm. the store Good last number. week. And I'm like, I need to buy these now. That was the entire... They had three? They had three. Yeah, oh, they had yeah. four because they were selling them by sing- in singles. Right, right. So... And they happen to have three of them. So, everything else is just a toy. That's a pretty, it's a pretty good tagline. No, that's a legitimate. That's good. It's a good, good like, that dude's like a legit marketing whiz, which is probably also why he's kind of like a slime ball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I also do like that he gets up and he's like, I'm tired of this, these like fake commercials selling toys that don't actually exist. Kind of like the, the, the Toy Story like commercial where they show a buzz light, you're like shooting lasers and a kid like knocks over the cans or whatever. So, like I feel like he he's the the boss, Mr. Mars, is a big like industrialist capitalist guy, but he actually wants to sell like a legit thing. Yeah. Well, because he's got to do like the biggest and the best of everything. Yeah. And can we also address that his assistant's name is Mrs. Kegel? I was going to yeah. address yes. that. Right. <laughs> I was going to call her Mrs. Kegel. So. I was going to let that one just slide. I have it written down. Let's, here let's in my, address in my the notes. egg in the room. <laughs> yeah. So back to hazy beer. So uh, when people told me about this beer, they told me a lot of pineapple and a lot of grapefruit. And holy crap, they weren't lying. Mm-hmm. This is like an explosion of fruit. Yeah, and a lot hops, of citrusy stuff it. going in here. It's yeah. really good. It's it's it seems much more grapefruity than pineapple-y, but it's not a bad thing. Mm-hmm. The pineapple starts off, and then it ends with the the. I'm sorry, the grapefruit starts off, and then it ends with the pineapple. Yeah, yeah. Like, but like the aroma of this beer is so strong, I can smell. Like, as soon as I open up the can, yeah, the like, moment nose, you crack my that, my nose just got flooded. Bundaba, Bundaba, yeah. this is very good. Good selection, gentlemen. Pass this over to Jess. I want to see Jess's reaction to trying this beer. I was about <laughs> to say, can I? Just... Yes. Oh boy! All right, mid podcast beer pass. Let's see how this goes. Transferring, <laughs> transferring, accepted. It. Yep. I'm trying. Now this is going to be. Also very hoppy, Jess, which I don't know how you're going to take to that. It's from all the rabbits that were no, blended into it. Eh? Eh? 
password. <laughs> it's pretty good. Oh wow! Okay. Hey. So we, we have a good, <laughs> we have a good baseline, which kind of brings up something else about <laughs> beer. Um, I have a, I had a buddy in college who did not like beer at all. We gave him a hop slam, and he was hooked. Nice. Oh, this wow. tastes like so. One of the green. few IPAs that like I like. Grapefruit rind a little bit. Like, oh yeah. It's right. Like right. Really good. Good. There we go. <laughs> I like that one a lot more than the one that I have. Okay, that, I'm going to make some beer suggestions to you after this podcast. Nice. And one of our uh, other objectives is to uh, open folks up to beer. Yep. Yes. Uh, so, so we missed um, one of the references to the Gremlins movies, which, Max, you just filled us in on why that is. Yes, the director of this movie, Joe Metz, I believe his name was. I, I'm bad with terrible with names, but the no, same guy who directed terrible. this movie also directed Gremlins 1 and Gremlins 2. There's a couple carryover actors as Isn't well. Like some Joe Dante, sorry. <laughs> Joe I was Dante. just trying to remember. Oh, these late credits, though. Oh, yeah. The yeah, credits it took a while, right? Going on. Well, they've got the premise of the movie established. They're making toys. Yeah. yeah. Also, like, this is a really cool sequence, like, visually. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. Like, I think this is pretty cool. I like the material dripping off. That's pretty cool. The, this is, like, super what the 90s would have thought of, or early 2000s would have thought 3D printing would be. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Uh, there's, I it's forget like the process. Toys. Yeah. But there, there, that is a 3D printing process where you've got just like a pool of material and you've got a laser that goes through and it builds it up. Actually, I forget what it's called. Okay. I was actually looking at that recently before I bought my own. Isn't that – that's a little smoother than the than the ones that – I think uh, so, yeah. Do by layers. Well, I mean I like it's the, still I like done the obvious layers, Hollywood but, like little yeah. soldering irons and such. Yeah. And, I remember a, a, a production scene from a movie like, that blew my mind. This shot is really cool. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, it's I like this. I like showing like yes. the, all the gears within the uh, the commandos. Um, you guys ever see Eraser with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yes, yes. I haven't. There, there's a whole huge just scene that revolves around a, a CD being made, and there's all this huge machinery just whirling around and lasers <laughs> going just to make a CD. And I was like, okay, this is definitely nineties. Seems accurate. Yeah. <laughs> so when I see this opening town crawl scene, I get a lot of Jumanji from this town. Uh, just pronounced like the Back to the Future. I, or, I, I deal with little Midwestern American town. Well, that was New England. Hey, Oktoberfest. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yep. So something that... I also might get that because Kirsten Dunst is also in this movie. Yeah. But sorry, James. Mm-hmm. Go on. So something that I find interesting, um, and we were talking about beer, so we didn't hit it. There's a lot of swearing in this movie. There is. Yeah, this movie has so, a Isn't it mostly from the toys? Mm, there's no, a little I, bit from them but it, the movie starts off in that boardroom and Dennis Leary keeps dropping stuff left yeah. and right yeah, it's a PG-13 so, movie well here's the thing though originally this movie was made to be like an edgy teenage comedy action thing Okay. then they got a bunch of indoor, like, deals with toy lines of like actually making toys and mm-hmm. stuff and they're like we need to dial some of this back Oh, so, so they, they like, cut they out. A, it down. They, they kitted it down. Mm-hmm. So this, there's scenes in this movie where like, oh yeah, this is a kids movie. This is a teen movie. <clears throat> okay, okay. that Supposedly actually they explains cut... like a lot. Yeah, of, like... that explains the weird tonal stuff in this. Movie. Yeah, because this movie is it, it doesn't yeah. know, so and, and it, apparently movie. they cut a lot of the action out of it. Yeah, because like, okay. to keep it kind of kiddy. Because I remember really? seeing this at like you know eight years old. It was one of the first PG-13 movies I saw aside from Batman. Right, right. Yeah, there are a couple times. And when uh, during this movie you're like, oh, okay, I guess we're at the uh, grown up table now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, it's like very like. What? Don't get rid of the microbreweries. <laughs> he has like the '90s kid haircut. It's right. like, he does, yeah. It. So good. It's very like home improvement slash Saved haircut by the Bell. Yep. Yeah. Jonathan Taylor Thomas. <laughs> that that actor who's playing the kid, I, I forget his name. He's actually been in a lot of like independent and in uh, just lesser known films a lot since this. That's nothing, like nothing that I've do seen. This and then, like, stop acting. And just stop. Just living off that fat small soldier's check. <laughs> <laughs> Quantity three. Global energy. So this kid's plan makes no sense. Oh yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> it's no, wonderful. It's a terrible plan. Because when he was like, "Oh, my dad's going out of town tonight," and then he'll be to back. Re- but he never tomorrow. says he'll, he never says he'll be back tomorrow yeah. at that. So I'm like, oh yeah, he's getting him like his dad's going out of town for like a week or yeah, something yeah. like yeah. that. Like that makes sense. Yeah, you could probably sell six toys in a week that are like fancy and cool. Yeah, but one day, like he buys the whole shebang. He, he buys the cardboard he buys the whole... cutouts and he's, everything. He's guys, the, 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 the promotional. Steals. He steals these. That is true. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like right. this is a crime. Yeah, they fell off the back of the truck. He actually yeah. uses that phrase. But You're spe- right. Uh, speaking of the truck driver, uh, 
Joe. He's played by an actor named Dick Miller, who was also in Gremlins and Gremlins 2 huh. as the old man next door, who's like, nice. ah, the Japanese put gremlins in your watches, and that's why your watches don't work, and whatever. <laughs> so. So these, to me, look like the Guile Lundgren and Wet Cat Monster playset. Like. <laughs> I was going to say, like, I'm a little disappointed that the rest of the Gorgonites aren't, like, ripped furries. I... <laughs> because, like... Okay. I'm very satisfied by like the appearance of Archer. Like, he right. Looks good. Yeah, yeah I, that's one thing I will say about that, this that, movie. That's a beast I would lie with. Yeah, right. For, <laughs> for, for, all, for all the Gorgonites. Like, I didn't want to say all it. The Commando <laughs> Elite, they're, all, they're all very distinct, and they're all very interesting to look at. Yeah. The character design is excellent for the Gorgonites. Yeah, the yeah. only one I don't and like pretty is good. the oh, He's my favorite. Really? If, yeah. How? Visually, I, he's the least interesting, but I like the character a lot. Yeah. He's so annoying. Oh, my God. If Archer was a Bioshock character, or not a Bioshock, a Bioware character, everyone would be trying to have sex with him. Right. Mm. In one second. One second. Right. Just immediately. <laughs> like, I would buy the game. Zoom in. Really? Practical effects by Stan Winston Studios. Oh, there, there is a beer swap going on. James has traded his M43 for a poolside. That is, this, is a, this is a great... A great gesture of camaraderie <laughs> yeah. from fellow <laughs> from fellow podcast member. I yeah. like that shot. Yeah, that, yeah, is, that cool was shot. good. Yeah, good it's fun. But why why is Chip the only one that's like hyper realistic and everyone else is like laser tag? And they're horrible, horrible I'm trying faces. to think of old like toy packaging from the 90s. Like I was really into Beast Wars when I was young. Yep. Hmm. And a lot of the Beast Wars like box art was like a hyper stylized like cartoony depiction of the character in the package. It wasn't like a like a you know, uh, the, the the very photorealistic, like you saw in that car- cardboard cutout. So I cutout. do have a question, and normally I don't like nitpick like this, but why do they not want to be found out as toys? It's weird. Like, yeah. Because this, oh, is like a, this is like a kid's <laughs> version of child's play. But, like, oh, but like they play. don't know about humans yet. Yeah, it's it's a weird... Um, I think it's because of like their, their weird little programming and chips where they're like, oh, they, have, they, so, they, they learn more. Because eventually... Like later in the movie, they like they go up and just like reveal themselves to whomever. Yeah. So they probably <laughs> By the... reveal themselves. You mean like try to murder? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And drug. Not not like yeah, oh trench God, coat so in the park kind of reveal, but yeah. Uh, admittedly, I did develop a crush on her in this movie. It's one of my first movie crushes. Aww. Was Kristen Dunn. <laughs> she is she is a gem. Mm. This relationship feels weird to me because she looks like a teenager and he looks like he's 10. Right. He looks so yeah. young. <laughs> yeah. It might be because I've seen her younger than this. Kirsten Dunst, that is. Yeah. Right, right. So maybe that's why I'm like, oh, yeah, it's been a couple years since Jumanji. And I she wonder was how kind old of like, she is in this movie, though. Um, I'd guess 13? 17, 18, maybe. Really? You'd think so? I don't know. i go younger well, than that wait. would be my guess. When did Interview with Vampire come out? 92? So she was like what, twelve in that? So yeah, so yeah. about seventeen or eighteen. So, so that is hilarious to me, actually. Uh, the, and the way that Tommy Lee Jones delivers that line cracks me up. Civilian, declare your allegiance. Yeah. <laughs> Nails him with that plastic Dude, rocket. He crushes it. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Great. Like, so good. Now, didn't you say Max that they originally were trying to get the cast of of Predator? To yes. be the voices for the yeah. Commando so Elite. The, the voices of the Commando Elite are all done by the Dirty, Dozen. the Dirty Dozen. Yeah. And they originally wanted to get Arnold Schwarzenegger, Jesse the Body Ventura, um, Carl. <laughs> I'm or, glad that you included that in uh, uh, Carl Edward? No, not. Uh, Carl Weathers? Carl, Carl Weathers, Weathers, yes. I'm like, not Carl Evans, Carl Weathers, yeah. They wanted to get all of them to do the voices for this movie. That would have been pretty but, great. Um, I'm, okay so, with, I'm okay with Jim Brown being in this movie. Oh, yeah. certainly. Yeah, there, as a rule, Jesse the Body Ventura must always be referred to by his full yeah, title. Right. Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Former governor, Jesse the Body Ventura. Yeah. <laughs> so they were considering, they wanted Arnold for a chip hazard. Yes. Yeah, I don't probably. think it would have gone as well. I don't think it would have been as good. Yeah, yeah. can't articulate as well as Tommy Lee Jones. I, no, yeah, Jones was the, the right the right. I mean, I mean, result. by this point, Arnold's in his comedy phase, almost at the end of his comedy phase. Because this is actually the post... The lighting there, right? Like, yeah. it's so yeah. good. This movie's like actually post yes, uh, Jingle compass, All the Way. Compass, yeah. He's going to get him. And he's cool with it. Like, the kid doesn't think anything... Like, why would yeah. you sit there and be like, where? how does this toy have a compass? Yeah, well, why are they over here? Yeah. Which is not where I left <laughs> well, them. To, like, well, 
I, I, I'm, I'm trying to like apply logic to this. He probably assumes like, oh, the little kid was back there. He was messing oh, yeah. around and stuff. Fair enough. But I mean, props to this guy for setting up a whole freaking like just diorama and display and all this crap for these things. Yeah, he mm-hmm. works yeah. hard. I wonder if he gets paid. Probably not. God, yeah, this, no. this movie, duh, I mean, child labor. He's got yeah, what, a 10 year old kid not running a toy store during the week. <laughs> yeah. What could possibly go wrong? Hey, it's Mr. Witwicky from fucking Transformers. I wanted this guy to be Al Borland so bad. Yeah. I don't think you so, see Chip. There, Tim? <laughs> <laughs> I think these guys' relationship is really cute. I love the yeah. poll later in the movie where the mom just rocks it out with the fucking tennis balls. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, like, I just think that, like, this family is really cute. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're. they're... They're very good, depending on like the, just because of like the troubled son they have, and he's like yeah. a small business owner who is it's trying like Donnie to. Darko. Yeah, mm, yeah. <laughs> but no, this movie I isn't terrible. Cellar door. <laughs> In comparison yep, to it. their neighbors on the other side of the. <laughs> oh, Phil Hartman, I yes. miss you. Sad fact: This was the last movie Phil Hartman was in. Or he died. The last Aww. acting gig he ever did was to provide the voiceover lines for the PlayStation 1 game Blasto. Really? Mm-hmm. But Bla- Bla- I love Dude. Blasto. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing I remember I remember a lot from Blasto, but the only line I remember from Phil Hartman is <laughs> there there are like these extremely voluptuous voluptuous uh, female characters in the game and one of Blasto's lines is now I've seen two wonders of suspension, the Golden Gate Bridge and that bra. Wow. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> it's just it's just so, amazing. So their relationship's very much like an Al and Tim Taylor from, <laughs> yes. from Home Improvement. Yeah. Yes. I, I, he even sounds sort of like Al Borland. Right. Yeah. He just he's discount Al Borland. Yep. Mm. I bet you he doesn't actually sell hoses actually, later in the He's his kind life. of like Al Borland plus. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I just think that the characterizations are very consistent. Like, <laughs> he drives an old car. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, and, his, like, old, I just think his, that, his like, old VW. Yeah, yeah, like, I just think that that's, like, really, like, I don't know. They put a lot of thought into this. Yeah. Like, it's not, like, slapped together for a toy commercial. Right. Like, no, it, I, I the, the production value of this movie is tremendous for what it is. Yeah. He even <laughs> so has, like, the, like, the, the Tim Allen, like, when I watched it. Because so, <laughs> I thought it was going to be, like dog shit mm-hmm. <laughs> and then like it was pretty decent and i yeah. was like oh no i'm not gonna be able to like make fun of these people <laughs> well i remember seeing this when i was you know eight years old and i didn't love it like i thought i would same i, I mean, wasn't i wasn't disappointed yeah when i was eight i was like nice but i haven't seen it since then no there's a lot of sediment in this to, beer to, to speak to your point jess do you think that this movie isn't doesn't feel like a like a marketing grab because it was originally made as a older movie or a movie at an older audience and then they got their toy deals and kind of went back and edited Instead it of the other way around yeah, it, it feels like yes i agree with you. okay <laughs> that and it, it's because it's a it's an uh it's a original ip it's yeah it's not like a, a tie-in to I'm somebody sorry, original ip what is that original intellectual property in 2017 <laughs> i don't know what that is <laughs> well played jess that was you got me you got me that's why we have you here <laughs> Well, you not, left your bike in the yard. It's not a jerk. sequel, <laughs> right? <laughs> it doesn't have a pre-existing fan base. <laughs> yeah. But this kid listens to Power Man Five Thousand. Okay. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Like, and his characterization is really good too, because like, if you look at like his room, mm-hmm. and like, also his room is so cool. Like, I would. Yeah, this kid's I room is yeah. baller as hell. Well. Here's, the, here's the weird thing, though. They mention, um, I don't know, if they have yet or if it's later that his family just moved there. Uh, but that looks like a very well like lived in room. There's dirty oh, yeah. flannel He's just everywhere. A dirty boy. You saw yeah. how quickly he got up that toy display. I'm sure this happened in an evening. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. like he's really good at that. Yeah. He's like an interior designer. Well, it, I'm it's sure weird though because your... he's he's his father's had that shop for a while that it's got a reputation as being the old timey place, but they haven't like lived near it. Yeah, I guess maybe like they moved like They're they were in the Tri County area. Yeah. Because yeah, like I... otherwise people wouldn't know about him getting kicked out of the edge school. True, yeah. I, yeah, I assumed it was a relatively local move, but I also assumed that these guys have been in this house for like a month or two at this mm-hmm. point. Right. Because, I mean, they talk about seeing him around school, and yeah. he clearly knows who Kirsten Dunst's character is. She lives next door. Yeah. Girl next door stuff. This joke is so mm-hmm. creative. <laughs> ah. uh. Used in a different way later on by idiocracy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> But again, Not I think that sure. just kind of goes with, like, he's learning. Right, right. Yeah. 
Didn't you? When nope. a cat monster <laughs> approaches? <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Yeah, practical effects are good, though. Yeah. I mean, so a, a, it's a shot of an action figure, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like blanks. it looks good. The inner child. The blanks. It's like a Toy Story you want to beat someone up in. Yeah. Probably got, like, wood-burning kits. <laughs> oh, my yeah. God, the train is, like, still going. Yeah. That kid didn't shut off the train. Yeah. Someone's getting grounded. <laughs> Jerk. So many kilowatts. <laughs> And, oh, and just yeah, like the I commercial, know, I think this, this movie is actually really good. This is the uh, <laughs> this is the trailer moment, if I remember yep. correctly. Probably. Also, just like the com- the promotional commercial. Yeah. yeah. So this is obviously CGI it. here, but it doesn't look terrible. Right. It's, it's pretty good. It's, it's yeah, because it, of it its looks plastic. Like he's melting the plastic right. instead of just ripping it. Yeah. It, I mean, it benefits from being a night shot, but also, like you said, Max, it, they're toys. So something about their the, like the commando vision and the gorgonite vision, the Terminator the, vision. Well, it looks like the Terminator, but if you notice. The commandos, even though they're the villains of the movie, have blue vision mm-hmm. as if they are the heroes of the toy line. Uh-huh. Or the yeah. Gorgonites have red as if they're the bad guys, even though they're the, the good guys of the movie. Everyone knows Team Red and TF2 is the superior team. Yeah. <laughs> Jim These Brown. Names are all so yeah, they're fantastic. Awesome. Yep. I'm actually a little disturbed by uh, the Bazooka Bros face. Yeah. Yeah, no, his horrible rictus smile is yeah. just like, I cannot yeah. look at him. That's bad. <laughs> like, this looks really good. Yeah. yeah. I have no problems with this. <laughs> right. No. I like all their names. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And, like, I just... Bart! <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. are you, like, outraged by his gun being broken? <laughs> yeah. Uh, there was also a PS1 game made from this movie there was not there yes, was there and was. my friend dave ashworth and i used to it had a versus mode also what so we was would it play a the, ver- game? the no it was a third person shooter oh of course so it was. we played hours of versus small soldiers <laughs> oh in, my god uh, are you probably thinking of the school. army men game nope i we also did that but no there was certainly a small soldiers <laughs> game i the guarantee were awesome That's they good. were they were very good yeah particularly the computer game because it was more of a a like strategy game Mm. And less of a, th- a third person. Third person. Just wants that loincloth gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's just just like... needs a good draft. He can Marilyn Monroe it up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Alan, now shut up. <laughs> that yes. is off. Yeah. <laughs> I do like off. that. Like, that's oh. adorable. Oh. The status is off. Like, that's just I cute. I didn't see that on either of my viewings of this. This is what it's like. Well, world collide. The Power Man 5000 poster, though. Mm-hmm. Still looking good there. <laughs> I, remember, I also I remember wondered, when the screen came up. I'm like, is that in Carta? Yeah. I too, Archer, go through, fall into the Wikipedia trap. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I I wonder in some shots if it's stop motion, like the shot with okay. him going to the mouse. Okay. Apparently, this movie is 33 percent stop motion, 66 percent CGI because this is the point when CGI was getting to be cheaper than stop motion. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, because this has to be stop motion, right? Right there with the with the mouse clicking at least. Yeah, and how like he's moving slowly and yeah, ponderously. Kitty, wow! What a good part of the movie. Ryan, that's... is your cat in this movie? Dubs, <laughs> are you are you looking on wet cat monster dolls? Aww. Yeah, that is adorable. It is Archer's face right there. Mm. I love you, buddy. It's uh. just, it's like that's such a like quick and easy way to be like this is the good guy. <laughs> right, pets love him. Cats are a good judge of character. <laughs> Declare your allegiance. Sorry, that still cracks me up. Cats only. Mm-hmm. Declare your allegiance, cats only, is now how we're going to greet guests. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a cool voice this guy has. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like for a while I would just go around and I was like, I am Archer, <laughs> emissary of the Gorgon. <laughs> like, it's just like... It's soothing. Yeah. Also, why isn't Globotech sharing their forever lasting battery technology in this movie? Yeah, for real. Yeah, that's just like they go into detail on the chip. Yeah. But like the everlasting battery is just like they throw that in. They're like, right. and it'll never die. Yeah, they buried the they buried the lead of this movie, which is a movie about batteries that never run out. Right. Well yep. it's 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 essentially the, the uh, arc reactor situation from Iron Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except without the goo Dude, that builds that up. Frog, in your look chest. at that frog, look at that frog. <laughs> but no, keeper um, of Encarta. Yes, Archer, I love this too. Keeper of Encarta. Yeah, 
uh, Archer is voiced by uh, Frank Langella, mm-hmm. um, most known for being Perry White in Superman Returns, uh, Boris Balkin from The Ninth Gate, and Richard Nixon from the Frost Nixon movie, oh, as well yeah. as many other things. Okay. The Ninth Frost Gate. Nixon one is the one that, that clicks with me. That's that's why I put that one in Thank there, because I would click with you. This is like so. This is actually amazing. the music. This from is Patton. Patton. Yeah, yeah. This is the actual music. And the for way Patton. that this speech is like put together is just like so good. It's such a it's such a blend of you know. It's like a ransom note made out of military movies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah pretty much with with the puzzle piece flag behind yes. him. Yes. Yeah. And it's just a bunch of nonsense. Right. Yep. And like it's just, ugh. I was hoping that they'd go full bore on one of the Patton quotes, but they just use the very first part of it, mm. sort of. They actually don't have him swear, though, because that Patton quote has him swear, yeah. but he doesn't do it in here. Mm. But I think he does He does swear later, though, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. He's cute. So I thought that was... I thought it, when they didn't have him swear when I was watching this again, it's like, oh, they must have made it so the toys don't, mm-hmm. but the but the like adults the do. Can. Humans. But that didn't hold. Mm-hmm. So... Oh no! Slam Fist is like such a sweet boy. He's just adorable. <laughs> I, Slam Fist is actually my least favorite because he's pretty much just Quasimodo. Which he references later. I don't know, man. I just like that he's like so gentle and good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I think I might dude. like Ocula the best. Ocula's yeah, pretty, the pretty big, fun. Uh, just because it's like, so cute when he's just like punk. Um, <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's like adorable. <laughs> And his horrible eyelashes. <laughs> like, that's body horror for me. Right. Mm. <laughs> so, how do my hair go like do, this every day? How yeah. do magnets work? It makes a lot of sense that the Archer scenes are stop motion because he's the only toy on screen. Whereas yes. all the commando scenes there's, are CGI oh, because there's sense, multiple yeah. of there's them. Very, very rarely is it just, mm. just one commando. Just one, yeah. Yep. Her character is really cool too. Yeah, like she's she's awesome. she's not at all what you expect from her. So she kind of reminds me of a character from Animorphs. Okay, Rachel. Yeah, but okay. So here's here's my thing. This movie is like Animorphs in many ways. Explain. <laughs> so in Animorphs, K. Applegate is able to do massive gore by making it on animals instead of humans. This is true, and, this and it gets movie... progressively more violent as the movie as the series goes on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And this movie, in the same way, is able to like get really disgusting by having it be on plastic toys instead of on people. Yeah, there is a lot of dismemberment in this movie. Like, so it uses that to like teach smaller children that war is hell. Okay. So that's why it's like animorphs. I'm just right. glad that we're pulling animorphs into this. Yeah. <laughs> I never watched Animorphs. You, or read, watched or read the books? Animorphs. No. <laughs> they um they were kind of an interesting. I don't know if that was turned into a show. I was aware of the books, but you guys are a little younger. Oh no, it, it, it was turned so, into like a live action show on I Nickelodeon. Mean, okay. I didn't really yeah. care about the show when I was yeah. a kid, but I was obsessed with the books. I had them all, mm-hmm. and all of, like the tie-in like bigger novels too. Which uh, I just have to say, the Andalite Chronicles is a good standalone science fiction novel. Sorry. Yeah, it, I remember reading that one. <laughs> but I, this reminds me of a tweet I saw a number of years ago where K. Um, J. J. K. Rowling, oh, what if wizards travel through chimneys and not use plumbing and whatever, blah blah blah. And K. Applegate's like, what if the living envied the dead? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but seriously, though, like I feel like because it gets it's... into some like deep like PTSD and it's children soldiers and so bleak. You know, I sorry changing directions just slightly. I'm, I'm kind of glad. No, 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 it's, I'm, it's fine. I'm kind of glad that. His whole just like, hey, I'm suddenly more interested now is triggered by conversation and not her like poolside in a bikini. Yeah, like, yeah. I appreciate that. It's a uh... but they take it down. They take it immediately down by having him be like, you're not like other girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> after four sentences. Yeah, I agree. Like, I, I'm also sad that they they reference the show Family of Five as opposed to Party of Five. <laughs> well, they probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want but... these teenagers to be watching a bad Bad sitcom mm. slash nine zero two one zero ripoff. <laughs> Max, what? It's, I see you eyeing me. I don't even know what the show you're because that's terrible, and it was only on for like a half of a season. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> 
but but no it, it is it is interesting that you see them bond over um dissimilar interests or not well, not really dissimilar interests but interests outside of like the the norm mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know like where i parted 90s parted hair boy <laughs> whose name yeah. i've already forgotten alan? um alan alan yes if, again jumanji um <laughs> Were I Alan and I'm like, oh, this attractive woman likes Led Zeppelin and, you know, we hate the same things. I totally live it into her as a teen. Oh, Hating certainly. the same things is essential to teenage relationships. Mm, yep. We became good friends by hating a similar person. <laughs> like, well, it wasn't me back then. So no, no. I'm it in wasn't the clear. You. I love <laughs> I didn't the know dad finds the mast right away. Yeah, yep. yeah he's Immediately. like, most important thing. My shit. He criticals Hello, that perception check. <laughs> I smell glue. Hmm. That poor ship was just forced into half mast. Ah! Uh, that bitch just robbed me. <laughs> yeah, what the hell, man? <laughs> I was really alarmed at this when I yeah, saw it I initially. Like, then I was like, oh it. no, she yeah. saved his ass. Just yeah. just good, good, call. good work, KD. I hate you, son. Yeah. I hate my no, crazy son. I made you a real home. You're adopted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I pulled that on my sister at her <laughs> at her college graduation. That's amazing. She was adopted. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Why did you like, like this? Really of that. important to tell you at dinner with like my grandfather and all of her friends. And I was like, "You're adopted." I <laughs> would have loved to have been present for that. <laughs> yeah. I could not laugh though, so it didn't hold very long. Yeah. But yeah. Brad drives a Kawasaki. That's how you know he's a bad boy, That's right? Dude, there's actually like. A lot of like cool like scooters and stuff mm. in, in this movie. Yeah, everyone yeah. everyone travels on two wheels. Like yeah, bikes like, in yeah. the background. A there, whole he has a gang bike to. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they just saw Akira at a very young and impressionable <laughs> age. impressionable <laughs> age. Canada. <laughs> Sorry, I only kiss people who hang upside down. Yeah. <laughs> Indo rain. There you go, Bob. Helmets later. Yep. He says loves loves long ships, which. Mm. I'm completely fine with. <laughs> Again, Jumanji, New England, hmm. woodworking. Man, I had to <laughs> donate eighty five ninety nine to PBS to get those tools. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very flammable dumpster. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That, that just it's just filled with hamsters. <laughs> All that wood bedding. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool too. Yeah, this is. Th- I remember I thinking that was brutal. I didn't notice that first time I had seen it. It had been twenty years, so I'm like, oh yes, yeah. a toy is pushing eggs out of a bird's nest for no reason. Yeah, he's not in the it's nest. A hole. Yeah, yeah. just a dick. More like dick bazooka. <laughs> That's a different thing. There's no. wow. A yeah, lot don't of you know this is Link Static? Yeah, right. yeah. We're about to see Brick Bazooka. Also, he's the skinny one. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, okay. He's the he, well, he's the the, communi- the communications guy. Yeah, he's the, he is the nerd of the of the yeah, army people. Like when he introduces himself or whatever, uh, Chip Hazard's like double up on your rations. Like he's like, first of all, they don't yeah. need to eat. Second of all, like he's, he's also so the, he's also the lowest <laughs> rank. He's a, he's he's he is a private. Right. This is like super. Like this is the first like hint that it's gonna get real nasty. Right. Right. Yeah. We're gonna have like some Corgan egg? <laughs> question mark. <laughs> We're about to have like some serious like in like inhuman violence. Yeah, it it always it's a weird nerd thing here, but it always bothered me when you see like vision from the robots, you know, mm-hmm. perspective. There's there's no literally no reason that that particular entity would need to see that view. They they don't need to recreate a screen within their vision to get information. Well, it's, I think it's, it's always bothered like since Terminator that's bothered thematic, me. Thematic, thematic emit, thematic I mean, elements. Maybe they just like. Have a heads up display because like, that would help me in my day. Ryan, we're not robots or Ralberts, yeah. So we we don't know. <laughs> and apparently, that heads up display display originates from the unmade Dune adaptation by Alejandro Jodorowsky. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yes. There is like in the storyboards. There's like point of view of robot when it has like the like the heads up kind of thing, like the Terminator with like diagnostics and schematics and mm-hmm. stuff. Neat. And that movie okay, would have been seventy four. Yeah, the the like, the leg came shit, flying dude. towards the screen, which in an obvious would have been a three D moment if this right. movie were made in two thousand seven. So rough. Yeah, and it all still looks pretty good. Yeah, no, this looks totally fine. Pulled his pelvis off, man. Mm. Yep. 
<laughs> so they establish that they feel pain yeah. as well, and that's like, whew. Well, like, it's, it's like they the... do and they don't, which is weird. Yeah, but like here, <laughs> he's definitely in pain. Yeah, I don't know if it's just like programmed that they feel pain. Like they, what they're that's even worse. Stuff. No, no, like yeah. they're pro- they're programmed to to know that like these things are supposed to hurt, or if they actually have like little plastic pain sensors. <laughs> yeah, I mean, plastic for me, it's sensors. just like <laughs> having them feel pain is like a choice, as like because they're supposed to be the bad guys, but you still are like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, I guess probably not as a child. As a child, you're like, haha, fuck them up, but like. I feel like as an adult, you're like more aware of like the consequences for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like this woman eventually gives birth to Flo from Progressive. <laughs> <laughs> I really like this scene also because like she's she continues to smile as she puts him on with right the, the machine. machine. Well, That's he asked the exact to be he, same. he asked to be put on it with a machine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Even so better. good. Like, and they don't like they don't like oversell it either it's just yeah. like this is like a really really good bit of comedy for me yeah right. yeah <laughs> again it's like this is this movie has some good satire to it yep <laughs> give me the machine put me on with the machine like unbelievable <laughs> it just never breaks the smile yeah, yeah she's yep. just like I love putting this guy on with yep. the machine <laughs> you're dead <laughs> okay Ooh. I like the idea that there's like word recognition software that says lawsuit and it just <laughs> yeah. he gets it's like pinged and like goes right up to like the top. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be mean to him. So James, how are you enjoying that pool time? Oh, I love pool time. <laughs> the beer and you know no, just actual pool. physical pool being time. at pools. Yeah, being at pools. Lots of pools. If he opens his mouth, he's like, eh. yeah. and then like no. And Jess, how do you enjoy this M forty three? I like it quite a bit. Nice. I mean, it is definitely still a beer, so it like, has like a weird aftertaste for me. Yes. But, like, I mean, I think it's pretty good. Excellent. Like, Excellent. I, I definitely can taste the grapefruit. We have achieved our really mission. Nice. So, like, thanks, I yeah. guess. <laughs> so, yeah, pleasantly surprised. Yeah. My two beers, I think, are just pretty decent. All right. But, yeah. like, this one, I definitely, like, I feel like I would drink again. Oh, wow. That is That is great. <laughs> No, that that well, the beer's great. the The chip, the chip hazard is not mascot. Great. No, oh, yeah, terrifying. That's scary. <laughs> His head is too big. It's just amazing. I like the guy in the background who's holding a chip hazard. Yeah, like the bust. Yeah. Also, like, what's her name? Miss Kegel. Miss. Yeah, I'm calling her Miss Kegel. Her outfit, though, like very nice. <laughs> no reason for her to be like that at mm-hmm. all. So it's interesting because those there's models in the background, so that shows that this company must have made some of these toys without chips in them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, display. Yep. Like there aren't little, that many numbers to try. He has like a little model of Akula on his yeah. desk. Well, mm-hmm. he is the designer of them, so yeah, and he yeah. loves them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that shirt, though. Oof. Not mm. according to Amazon there, uh, David Cross. What is that David stress Cross. toy there? I hope that they show the stress toy again. <laughs> it's the classic stress toy. You know what? This movie would be better if they had fidget spinners. <laughs> <laughs> like, they have all these... I don't know. Like I like this, too, because it's like... They have like all the cool toys. Simon's on the wall. Yeah, this is like the equivalent of like yep, how yep, they yep. have ping pong tables in uh, Batman vs. Superman. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like making fun of like modern... Or like, uh, do, you, do you think they force each other to eat Jolly Ranchers too? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Boop. We've got one room now. We can put those movies behind us. <laughs> I would watch Batman vs Superman again. <gasps> oh boy, you are Whoa. a stronger person than Wait, any of us. What did you just say? I would watch Batman vs Superman again. Why? The director's cut. No. Yeah. Why? I thought it there's, was pretty good. There's there's more Whoa. of that movie? Yeah. The room is spinning. <laughs> it, it it's not the beer. It actually adds a lot to like improve Lex Luthor's character. Mm. You, mm. None of you believe me. No. <laughs> mm. Well, there wasn't much there to begin with. Evil so. Max Landis? <laughs> uh. 
There will be no mercy. I like how the, uh, one of the bad things about the, these subtitles are the subtitles say who is actually saying the lines. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. See, what, what Archer doesn't realize is that they're not trying to threaten him. They're just playing Overwatch downstairs and telling right. everyone there will be no healers in this game. Right. <laughs> Need healing. <laughs> Maybe that was CGI, would be my guess. That looks like stop motion to me right there. Yes. Yeah. When he was that, walking the toward the good. camera. But the CGI on that, there's, I think the hand is turned into CGI on that. I would That's stop motion. Me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good, so, good yelling. interesting tidbit with regard to filming stop motion animation if they want to add motion blur, they'll often pound the table the moment the picture is taken so that it's shaking and blurry for that frame. Oh. That's really interesting. I like that. I like, yeah. So I want to be like you said, the, the guy who had to do the subtitles for this movie and listen really closely yeah, like, and like, be like, who's, All right, who's talking Which commando now? is this? Yeah. Well, but they probably just have it in the script. Yeah, but they don't necessarily movies don't necessarily follow the script all the time. This is true. This is true. And then you have movies like Evil Dead Two, which has some of the greatest subtitles ever. <laughs> I am not familiar. It's pretty good. It's pretty good as far as like the little background. It's like moose laughing chaotically or something <laughs> like that. Also, can I just say like I really like the the way that they like make a bunch of like Rube Goldberg machines. Right. Yes. Okay, that is something I remember about this movie. Yeah, I was like, taking, oh shit, like, the little like saw thing yeah. like cutting the kid's hand or the dremel yeah 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 they legit hurt this child yeah like that's ah, one of those few it. like this is a pg-13 this is a pg-13 it's scene so messed up right yeah so did they did like they change up his little dynamite sticks or does his little toy actually come with tiny explosive pieces of dynamite <laughs> I, it looks like he found some lady fingers or something. Uh, yeah, I mean, because they robbed the the store, and I assume I don't know if there would be explosive caps in a wood kit. Yeah, Might, they could be fuses. Could be. I do Ryan, like the dad has a, has a has a strip on. Yes. Did you ask if fuses explode? Do, yes. Do fuses explode? No, they just burn. They pop. Well, they burn and they make a popping noise. I like that he explains this as if it explains why he was putting a toy down the garbage disposal <laughs> right. and yeah. has a cut on his hand that's, like, serious. Yeah. He's really into the X-Files. Like, that doesn't explain anything. <laughs> this line is so bad. He looks like mm. a very overweight Robert Downey Jr. from that angle. Oof. <laughs> and why? Why does this happen? Let me turn off my light. Yeah, because he's yeah. mad. He did. He told. He told him to shut up. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Projected aggression. I feel like also like movies made during the nineties have like a really nasty view towards like psychology and like psychotherapy, like as a discipline. Mm. Yeah. Like it's it's so weird. Like I. I I'm thinking of this and, and then also the Santa Claus. <laughs> like, yeah, like with we, Tim Allen? I don't, we, it, yeah. we, I don't <laughs> think at that point we had gotten to the point culturally where like it was seen as something regular that people did. Yeah, there's there's yeah. definitely like still like a big stigma. Mm. It's like, oh my gosh, you had to go to a therapist. For like, blah, blah, people blah. unironically say shrink in the 90s. Like, mm -hmm. really weird. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, I don't. I get that with the other movies. I didn't get that from this line in this one. I think the dad is actually trying to legitimately think back to what Alan is doing. Maybe, but I feel, uh, but I feel like he's been through this so many times that like, that's why he's trying to. And that might just be frustration with the son. But I didn't think that the father was necessarily taking it out as like as psychology is bad. I didn't get that vibe no, from I don't this think movie. That the no, character is. I think that the movie is. Mm. Like, because I think that the movie is like saying, trying to justify. Well, his they're crazy saying there's like the psychology. movie is saying like the psychiatrist is wrong about this guy. Mm. You know oh. what I mean? Oh, okay. Because yeah, we don't ever because we don't ever actually see Alan acting out. Yeah, like, yeah. we always seem trying to do the good thing. Like, I want to make my fat my father store some money. I want to hide the fact that I made a mistake mm. and clean everything yeah. up. So you know, like, he's always trying to 
fix his, the mistakes he's made throughout this movie. Yeah, I think it's a perspective that the movie takes and not the yeah, two characters. Um, us, like okay. the other characters in the movie, are forced to just deal with the rumors of his past. True. Yeah. All right, I get what you're saying. Noise. Jess. That makes sense. This is okay. This is stop motion, based off yeah. how the jaw was yeah, moving there. Agreed. <laughs> terrifying. Yeah. His face. The is teeth. Terrifying. Yeah, so, it's the teeth for sure. Do you think he's supposed to be? Ah. Yeah, he's scary. Do you, th- do you think the uh, the Rip Commando or whatever the guy's name Kip is, Kilgan. Kip get Kilgan, it? is supposed to be like face from um, the A Team? I don't know. I didn't Not really... face. I'm sorry. The the leader of the A Team, the guy who chews the cigar Murdoch? all the time. Murdoch. Yeah, chooses cigars. Got a big I old gray, gray hair. Reference there. I don't know. Ugh. That little like, yeah. like sound effect was really used well there. Like the right. sound design of this is very right. good. Yes. Yeah, and I think the soundtrack is also really good. Oh my gosh, we haven't we haven't gotten oh, yeah. the soundtrack, but this yeah, soundtrack no, it is doesn't, amazing. The yeah, second it, half of this it does not deserve off. this soundtrack. No. Are, you, are you listening, Suicide Squad? Yeah, no. I was gonna, I was gonna say like this is like the soundtrack is like the well implemented version of what Suicide Squad was trying to do. <laughs> yeah. This is a great line. <laughs> yeah, but I don't. I don't know if he's supposed to be Murdoch. I, I mean, because he's like the, he's like the stealth ops guy. No, no, more of know. just like a like a facial design kind oh. of deal, like a like a nod to Murdoch, basically, oh, like the, like the cigar maybe. chewing, maybe, yeah, kind of well, grain hair guy. It's like all of them are like a pastiche of like references to like yeah other war movies. So like, I feel like it probably is like a nod to that. You know, speaking of the soundtrack, I'm going to have to dig through my my junk and see if I still have this disc, because I did buy this movie's soundtrack almost immediately after seeing it. I think my radio station in college might have had it, because we had a lot of, like, 90 soundtracks on CD. That's so cool! <laughs> this is good set dressing for a dumpster. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Looks like a real dumpster. There's no enough, like... delivery I mean, only for the inner child. <laughs> Using a real dumpster is probably a lot less expensive than renting a fake dumpster. <laughs> well, you never know, though. <laughs> Gotta dress that garbage. Yeah. Not all ripped furries. Oh, there's a gremlin. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's Gizmo sitting yeah, there. Yeah, there are little gremlins in there. <sighs> yeah, his design is, like... This is the least interesting. His his design, I think it could be used in like any other like nineties sort of monstery toy line. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I just But everyone else is pretty great. Punch it and <laughs> Slam Fist are a little bit too similar in their personalities. They're both like large, gentle Yeah. Yeah, I mean So you're calling to say you're calling. <laughs> you just say that we never call. I'm calling you right now. <laughs> Fucking big trouble. If you haven't seen it, do it now. <laughs> There's no reason that I can find for this to be a clean room. Yeah, no, I don't get it either. <laughs> I don't know, Ryan. You know well, a little bit more about electronics. Explain really why there'd be a clean room no, or why you would not no. need a clean room. Not really in the fabrication of There's like no semiconductors and stuff, but... Uh, Eh, it's not too much of a stretch. There are other things in this movie that are more of a stretch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there are alive toys that never die. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's Robert Picardo mm-hmm. of Star Trek Voyager fame. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. I, was what, I was trying to figure out where I knew him from. Yep. He was the medical hologram, which is an interesting character that that the doctor was not even real. Yeah. I like that. Must oh, be yeah. a problem on your end. No, yeah, yeah. Well, no, that's typical. Hardware blaming software, software mm-hmm. blaming hardware. This yeah. is this is a real thing. I like the implication that something as uh, advanced as they're implying only needs about sixteen pins to operate. <laughs> <laughs> I do love just the hyper aggressive. Just this joke corny. only works if he's assaulting David Cross's yes, character because they look exactly the same. It's like angry David Cross versus meek David Cross. <laughs> right. It's like he got split, you know, like his good half and his uh, evil yeah. side. Got that happens in Animorphs. Exactly. <laughs> yes, it does happen in Animorphs. One with the starfish. Yeah. 
This is the uh, me, myself, and Irene moment of this movie. <laughs> Electromagnetic puppets. You idiot. Nerd. I do like that this movie and Aliens vs. Predator Requiem have the same ending, where they just nuke the town. Mm-hmm. <laughs> also, the sneeze is dumb, but it still cracks yeah. me up. Here's a bag of cement. Got a little something yeah. in your face. So and basically, has. it's it's the super soldier serum from Captain America: First Avenger, mm-hmm. right? Or the other super soldier serum from Universal Soldier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How have we not watched Universal Soldier yet? I don't know what that is. Didn't they make like four of those? There are four of them. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a, a bad. Um, it's a Val Kilmer movie. I thought it was no, JCBD. Dolph Lundgren. Dolph... No, it's John Claude Van Damme and yeah. Dolph Lundgren in the first one. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Oh, we missed the wrestling. He told me who yeah. The first episode of MST3K. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The, the wild and totally divergent styles of the Gorgons are great. Yeah. yeah. Like, you never mistake who is who. They also speak to a ton of 90s toys. All right. Yeah. I love the suction cup noises. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when he takes off in just a moment here. Cute. Yeah. But also, like, the hair. Watch this. Listen. Was it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's adorable. Yeah, this is great. Disney then stole that 20 years later for Finding Dory. <laughs> right. I didn't oh. know For the octopus? The octopus. Every time he runs around everywhere, it sounds like that. Huh. Yeah, my flight was canceled. Ooh, bad joke jail for me. This kid has a ton of street signs all mm-hmm. throughout his, his bedroom. He's a delinquent. He just steals his room looks them. like a it's just, yeah. I, I, maybe that. Ex- oh my Where's god, you guys! Flare? Yeah. No, that explains everything. He's got all the street signs in his room, which explains why literally no one gives a fuck later on in the movie when toys and explosions are happening for you know four hours in his backyard. And he likes Xena. Yeah. Nice, nice. Like, war is not healthy for children and other living things in the background. Yep. yep. And she's got, like, threes up on posters, which is yeah. why she can't date younger dudes. <laughs> he also has a a aquarium and a terrarium in his room. I think who wouldn't, like who wouldn't want both of those? Yeah. Bit. I mean, he's got half the house as his room. I do like this. I like the, yeah. the, the like rigged up version of how they have a they're <laughs> tapping the phone and here begins the soundtrack yep yeah so how much do you think they spent on this soundtrack not enough because they <laughs> could have put more in mm. i mean i think that they pretty much nailed it they, oh it's so good. oh it's gosh yeah that we so we see the assemblies of i like this kind of assembly scene where they're showing how the right vehicles this, get put together this is a montage, montage max it is it's so good. Gotta build it with the montage. <laughs> is it a montage though? Because it has dialogue in it. Uh, I think a montage. You can have dialogue in a dialogue. montage. Yeah. Mm, okay. Can I do that? Can I just can I just recommend myself all the time? But the 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 design of the little vehicles they're making are phenomenal. Like they they are way better than. What this movie deserves, I think. The we ma- are like gushing over this movie right now. <laughs> yep, it's the Mad Max of toy movies. <laughs> it is. It is the Mad. Yeah. They they base the vehicles off Mad Max designs. That makes <laughs> sense. Good old yawn. That's that, that's so endearing. They yeah. just want to go home. Yeah, yeah. right <laughs> to Yosemite. Yeah. Yeah, that voice though. Yeah. yeah, he has the worst voice, that's but the, I like his design the best. Yeah, like that yeah, was my favorite when I was because he's, he's like, like a wow character. Him and him and um, Slam Fist have like they're like the big bruiser guys that are gentle and whatever. Yeah, but he has a more interesting character design. Mm-hmm. Yeah, worst yeah. worst voice though. Yeah. Different trees. Yeah, and then <laughs> and then yeah. no, and then. I like that he has a mobile. <laughs> he just has it's a everything. planetarium thing, or not a, not, a, not a planetarium thing, a solar system, I think. It's a mobile. Okay. Big yellow one is the sun. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, they can be both. <laughs> Jess is correct. Can be mobile of the solar system. See, I can't help but feel that some of those scenes are actually neither CGI or stop motion. I think that they're just puppetry. It feels oh. like. Ryan, did someone age you and then put you into this movie back in time? Oh, yeah, this is exactly me. This, These two feel like they're based off of the neighbors from... Uh, National Lampoon's from National Vacation. Lampoon's Vacation, yep. <laughs> Thank you. This is so relatable. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> As I said... Yeah, this, Ryan. This is just me. <laughs> like, oh my god. Wait, did is this is this the the inspiration for Jerry from Rick and Morty? Yeah. <laughs> I also loved this part when I first saw the movie. Just putting the the folks to sleep. Isn't it moron. Hmm. <laughs> they got chemistry vision. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, these are the most like advanced computers ever. Hmm. They they could pretty much like end world wars, <laughs> but no, we're gonna make toys. <laughs> <laughs> Operation Sandman. Good name. Mm-hmm. I'm due to you. I did a Heath Ledger. Oof. Uh. You go into the corner. I am in the corner chair. <laughs> Those are some weird pills, by the way. Yeah. yeah. To dissolve. Yeah, that like doesn't that. look like Benadryl at all. Either that or it's or that thing is like 90% booze. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I just love that. <laughs> that is such a good line because it it, like, it's just like so like it is the most. It is, it is the most like there's a good guy and bad guy war. That's like the shittiest yeah. thing that you can say. I know. So bad. Yeah. But that, that's that's regarded as like one of the good wars. I'm using quotation fingers, people of the podcast. <laughs> it is. I mean, we're recording this on the anniversary of D Day. We're recording this on the anniversary of D Day. I mean, for a for a lot of uh, philosophy classes, World War II is used as the basis for the idea of a just war. Well, that makes sense. Obviously, yeah. Aha! Right. You've been usurped by the human. Yep. Like hell, I will be usurped. <laughs> I like that he's like, no, no, what me, boss, or whatever he says. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't my <laughs> idea. He's like, I just got promoted. Sorry. What a traumatizing event for a child. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, like, I don't know. Like, I, I think that this is like a really like. It's like really hammering its idea home. Mm-hmm. Like, it definitely has a strong message. <laughs> And, I mean, it's, like, a pretty basic message, but it's one that, like, I feel like still has merit. Like, I don't know. But this is definitely, like, this is a teen movie scene. Yeah. Yeah, this is a very yucky scene. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This movie is breaking one of the GBBB rules of not ogling the female form, <laughs> plastic yeah. or otherwise. <laughs> Yuck. Yuck. <laughs> okay. Also, this is grim. Like, so like yeah, scary this 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 upcoming like... scene is. There's something about when you use electrical appliances for their, for so, other than their purpose, that is something I just find right. very disturbing. I think Blast the blenders are scary. Can we talk about how they use a pencil case for a body bag? <laughs> yes. I was wondering what that I was. That. I didn't even realize what that was. I thought it was maybe like one of those little bags you have in your suitcase that you like a dip di- onto the side. Right, or like, right. a, like a ditty bag. All right, 12 yeah. pins. Or Is that 12 bag? pins? I like at this point in the movie, they're just like, nah, fuck it. Just make things look like science. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Ryan. Weird science we explain. probably this moment. No, 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 it's not a thing I can explain. The fiber optic, like, None of this makes things sense. in the background, like... They really rated the Spencer's gifts. I was... That is actually the, one of the things I wrote down. It's like, this was all filmed at a Spencer's. Yeah. Also, this is magic. What's happening right now is yeah. magic. Yeah, it's just... Like, how does that make any sense? It doesn't. And also, why it do they speak great. with lady voices? They should all sound like Nick Nitro. <laughs> That is a good point. It's because the chips learn. It yeah. learned what kind of body it's in. It's just in. one chip. It doesn't make any sense. I'm angry at this movie. The chips always learn. That's what we learned from the... But how, but using but the, but how do they multiply? The, the, That's what Jess uh, is wondering. The, the yeah, cupcake thing as, like a, as an electric chair? <laughs> yeah, like... I, yeah. 
all of that is like so cool the way they like repurposed this like, this is very jarring all of this is oh yeah a little yeah. disturbing i think that the entire thing also is stop motion other than this scene right here yeah like because you were going like from from individual yeah um commando elite and then you see their horrific that's giant so weird teeth. because like then they cut to frankenstein after they have that scene <laughs> yeah and then oh yeah like ugh. My cat does the same thing. <laughs> he does. Swims around with the fishes? No, he does the Gorgon. That's the actual cat on screen. <laughs> this is a cool scene. So like Archer skipped the uh, the wind section of Encarta, huh? Yes. Yeah, he didn't yeah. learn about that. Like, at this point in the movie, half of Archer's lines are just like, Really lame Radiohead lyrics. <laughs> feel? See? They don't feel. They don't feel. Yeah. So they, they have pain receptors, but they can't feel anything? Yep. The nerve sections are only in the chest, not in the hands. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, that's actually pelvis. super odd. Maybe they only feel, like, they don't feel anything but pain. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That was wind with four ends. Four, according to the captions. That guy's face, Phil Hartman's Phil face Hartman. right there is so gross. <laughs> but I have an earring. Yeah. I'm cool. Yeah. All right. And my frosted tips. Back up, Jonathan Taylor, dumbass. Oh! Good Joke, one, jail. Joke, jail. Joke, <laughs> jail. See the the pull there is she actually saw him and didn't care. Yes. Yeah. Good she is a good female role model for young women who are <laughs> seeing this movie. <laughs> Practicing the lines is, is I yeah. think that's kind of fun. That's and funny. Like, like almost it. maybe slightly humanizing for the jerk character. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For Brad Dushington or whatever his they, name is. They set him on fire. Yeah. yeah. The this giggling is, is terrible. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say this is exactly one of my worst nightmares. <laughs> Just a bunch of like <laughs> mishmash electronics, sentient in your toys, house. all of a sudden. It, it's also a weird pull that they do on this. That all of a sudden these guys are having a lot of like deformities mm-hmm. through the process. Well, they, they, yeah, well, they tore them all apart to put like circuitry in their heads and such. Yeah. I, that one cracks me up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, but, she's got a camo bra on. Where'd she get that? Yes! Okay, this so... This part! <clears throat> this is probably my first introduction to Led Zeppelin. <clears throat> Led Zeppelin is very picky about how their music can be used. Well, they're, yeah, they're very expensive, too. <laughs> that, too. So, they spent a lot of money, and they're like, Hey, Robert Plant, Jimmy Page, and John Paul Jones. But probably this just the first two. This, this is what we wanted to use communication breakdown for. Yeah. This is just terrifying. You know, right now, Tim Burton is being out Tim Burton. Is what's happening in this scene. <laughs> well, if it was Tim Burton, all these dolls would be very... They're, they're, not, they're nowhere near pale enough to be Tim well, Burton yeah, dolls. Well, yeah, true. It'd be a lot more black and white aesthetic, but... Yeah. A lot more daddy issues. Well, there's already his, the Alan and his dad, so... Yeah. The lines that they keep hammering away are Yeah. Fun. Yeah. Hey, he took one it, out. They are a lot of, like, these stereotypical, like, female doll lines that they were starting to make pa- parodies of in, like, The Simpsons and such. Yeah, Mauled Madness lines. <laughs> yep. But, yeah, they light him on fire. 30-year-old man rolling down the stairs. <laughs> and Good job, tween, stunt And then tween into frame. Somewhere, uh, they're like, you know what? He could be Robin. Just, yeah, right. <laughs> Give him seven more years and he'll be old enough. <laughs> yeah. He even pulls his pants off and runs on his underwear. Yeah. Like Robin would. Dude. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. Is that from something and I, I just don't know Platoon. it? I think so, yeah. Like, it's so wild. I think it's a Willem Dafoe line, actually. I believe it is. Ah. <laughs> 
He could have died. Yeah. The <laughs> like a VHS tape. Okay, people watching at home, that is called a VHS tape. <laughs> yeah. <Right. laughs> Surrender Dorothy. <laughs> <laughs> The, the upside down watching makes me laugh. <laughs> I like it. And you can see the eye yeah. Yeah. on the TV. <laughs> Stick to the <laughs> script. <laughs> I like how he blinks. Akua. Yeah, <laughs> that line. Nah. Oh, let's do this. Shit gonna get real. Yeah. The zoom in me no, makes you know he's serious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I did appreciate this. Uh... Yes, this is a rather. Yeah, I like this bait and switch. Yep. I feel like this is only a plan that could be done by someone whose dad owns a toy mm. shop. Yeah. And the the bike is still there, but where is the pantsless wonder? Hmm. He ran off. He just disappears. This yep. helmet, the helmets are spread across the uh, the uh, driveway, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Again, just pain? No pain? I don't know. Yeah. Maybe the Some pain. can't Some feel pain. The Right. Advantage. That's the one advantage they have. They can't feel pain. <laughs> For realism. They want realistic soldiers. Yeah. I'm feeling very insecure. I, d- I like that shot of the of the soldiers walking like, out mm-hmm. to the... Mm-hmm. Like, this place becomes Bedlam soon here. I oh, mean, gosh, just... yeah. Oh, yeah. It's about to go completely the, the The third act of this movie is just it's bonkers. bonkers yeah. It's too long, though. I will say that the third act of this movie goes on way too long. I don't disagree. Would you say that the last fight scene goes on too long? Whoop. You're that's a you leave one woman alone. <laughs> I'd think about like is he talking? I'd think like is there a big fight or is he talking about Wonder Woman's third act? <laughs> Which Wonder Woman's third act is a little bit too long. Um. Yeah. And. It feels like Zack Snyder directed that portion of the movie. I mean, that's a pretty common criticism that I've been hearing. Like, there's a lot of punching. Feel like it's like that yeah. part goes back to like the like DC. Yeah. You like aesthetic <clears throat> more. Mm-hmm. Uh, I still think that it's really good. Oh no! Yeah, it's it's, it's, like, it's a great movie. During that sequence, it is long, but it's like there's character development happening even in the third act of that movie. Hmm. So like. Yeah, there's a lot of the reveals and such, but. Yeah, I'm the, sure the she's bedroom fine. sets are 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 what done very question. well. <laughs> That's just... Sorry, are you all right? Oh, Sorry. <laughs> oh, I thought you were asking a question. I, th- I thought you were actually asking a question. No, but no. Um, the 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 house and the bedroom sets in this movie they're very well done. Um, the CGI Oof. looks terrible when it's kind of up close to Alan like this. Like it just yeah, yeah. It's weird when it interacts with the humans. That's they have, the they haven't got they really... haven't gotten to that point yet. Yeah. <laughs> That's really good. I like that part. So, the Gwendy Dolls voiced by Sarah Michelle Geller. Mm hmm. And uh, who's really? the other one? Yeah. I did not know that information. That's fun. I like that. Gwendy number eight. Yep. Archer Archer's like, I'm out of here. <laughs> If I hit a woman, this internet's going to blow up on me. Oh, Christina Ricci is the other female voice for That's, the Wendy Yeah, I'm like wow. the second one's on top of my tongue. Tip my tongue, but yeah. That was good. See, I, just, I, like I don't that. think Arnold could have done that. He'd be like, ah! Oh God, it's got like the little, like... The shakers. Uh, that, that's the, the things that were always in front of KB toys. Yep. Yes. I, again, have... Okay, that's interesting. Uh, Ertl toys, who... Um, created that toy, the the shaking ball. I've actually been to the house of the guy who designed that toy. Really? Yeah, my mom knows him. <laughs> was it was it a big house? It was 
huge. That, that's, We're talking chandelier in the front door down like three floors. That's really huge. depressing that that's... he designed that toy and that's what he got out of it. <laughs> good for him. Well, I don't know that it's the only thing he's done. Well, it is among him. the things. Also, whose toaster is this amped up? <laughs> they modified it. Of course. That's an Look awesome weapon. So they're in. <laughs> Burning CDs. Destroy and pursue. That's backwards. <laughs> well, it's like all of his commands are like structured that way. Yeah. Yep. I feel like maybe they ran out of like words. He... <laughs> this bitch is even cooler than I thought. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Wait. Oh. Watch. Wait. Does she want me to? He also look has very red lips. Want? Got to bring this baton. It's very important. Yeah. I thought she was hitting them with a golf club when I was first watching I, I it. I thought it was as well. Yeah. Like a nine iron? Yep. Okay, here, here comes the movie soundtrack. becomes too good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These are all great. It's so oh, good. Yeah. So good. This is one of my favorite tracks of all time. <laughs> I'm pretty yeah. sure this is a trailer moment again. It is. Oh, yeah. It is. I think, and they played the song too. Yep. Fuck, dude, a cheese grater? <laughs> yeah. What an awful thing. That thing's that wild, is. man. Yeah. Just, is it shooting like washers? The, the, yeah. The, just the designs of these vehicles are just it's, great. This is the, the corn cop, the corn <laughs> things. Ow. Yeah. Because those are like a good inch long. Right. Yeah. yeah, he got hurt. Yeah, those, are, those were breaking car windows a moment ago. <laughs> so those things are serious. He's just got just four of them sticking in his leg. <laughs> yeah. That's so good. God. She just like giggles as she destroys like. <sighs> She's just oh god, I have eight puncture wounds in my leg. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, hee hee, this is fun. It was... They're going into my bone. <laughs> We're going to drive away into the 1980s. <laughs> right. A far oh, too... That is such a cool scooter. A far yeah. too minute thing to have noticed, but when they cut to the shot of her getting on the scooter, her baton was on the ground, but still rolling in the background. Oh. Yeah. She had just dropped it. Ah, because fire. Again, yeah. First, this is me learning about Led Zeppelin, war. Yeah. I think I'd already heard Queen by this point. I think I'd seen Wayne's World. Okay. This is one of two movies in the same time frame that uh, had this sound, uh, the song in the soundtrack. First of which was Rush Hour. Which Rush is Hour is like two years after this, though. Hmm. Well, same, roughly same the same period. time here. Time yeah. Frame. Good God. No, no, no. no. Uh, actually, this is... The 90- trees are soaking gasoline. Massive property damage. Small Soldiers is 98. I think Rush oh. Hour was 97. Mm-hmm. What? Rush Hour is a good movie. It is a great movie. Rush Hour is a good movie. First two are great. The third one is not. Yeah. I have not. At one point... I think I've seen Rush Hour. Oh, movie. God. They're zording up. Yeah. Ramming speed. But no, um... Yeah, trees are soaking <laughs> gasoline in this movie, but... <laughs> like, seriously, oh, this at is one like... point, Chris Tucker was the highest paid actor in Hollywood. That, I could see that. I mean, Ruby Rod alone. That's yeah. fine. It's totally fine. Whee! That's clearly... Okay. Became, that became E.T. there for a second. Yep. Ah, both Small Soldiers and Rush Hour were 1998. Huh. Okay. Edwin Starr got a lot of money that year. Mm. Yeah. Now they make the classic mistake of being like, well, that's good enough. Yep. yep. Double tap. Weirdly enough, though, the, the song War does not appear in its original format on the official soundtrack that you buy from this movie. Aww. It's like a weird cover. Yeah, it's a weird cover with Henry Rollins. <laughs> what? Never mind. I would love to what? hear that. Can we listen to that? At the yeah, end, it's, after this, after it's the recording. an interesting track. <laughs> don't look, don't check. Don't, don't worry about that part. Yeah. Bye-bye. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's Henry Rollins. Saigon. It's Shit. Henry Rollins and Still Bone Thugs and Harmony. What? <laughs> I want to hear that so bad. Okay, guys, get ready for this. Sorry, full full set of artists contributing to the war cover. Henry Rollins, Tom Morello, what? Flea, oh. and then Bone Thugs and Harmony. Oh. What? How? Same track, but but not the original one, which is why I actually bought the soundtrack for War and another one, Bats of Dust. This is totally like we wanted Arnold, because when his face is like messed yeah. up. Dun, dun, oh, yeah. dun, dun, dun. This is his moment, Moses moment. Rides down the river. Comes nice. back up. 
Giant's Toy World. I feel like that could have been stop motion. Mm. Mm. Yeah, Somebody's going to take a bath for, uh, on this short one. on the box. I don't understand a, what that means. Is a phrase I've yeah. never heard in my life. Yeah, some weird toy warehouse owner phrase. Because <laughs> taking a bath is generally a good thing. Yeah. This bus driver is like, or truck driver is taking part in serious bus anti-capitalist driver. action. Mm-hmm. Doctor That's bus he, driver. Well, he likes truck traffic, buses. He likes boxes, craft brewery, yes. so hmm. that was his thing. It's like, oh so, god, one trucks corporation. Are, trucks are just buses for boxes. <laughs> Huh. I that's yes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Got to Phil Hartman it up a little bit. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> scene. He just believes in brainwashing. <laughs> yep. Yep. He's just like that's a real thing. It's the '90s. Brainwashing was all the craze. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> cell phones can't use cell phones. Mm-hmm. Brainwashing. Wow. I'm on Did it bite the dust? He refers to her as tripping earlier, yes. which is she's, a good, which is a good on, nod, uh, a good night, good nineties. Yeah, that's yeah. a bad life. Yeah. <laughs> Does he have an MIT shirt? Yes, it is. Yep. <laughs> Narc. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like the Jay Moore Drushery that comes up here and then the subsequent uh, retaliation from dad. Yeah, I like that like the dad is not like a dick here. Like it's cool to have <laughs> Crunch. Like yeah. his family love him. Yeah. 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 Stuart. <laughs> so cute, so innocent. Mm-hmm. He's so happy. Mm. He just wants to meet his baby. Mm-hmm. Oh, cats in the background. Yes. <laughs> I'm your dad. <laughs> yeah, and Saniac is like strangely Jewish comedian. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't understand his gimmick. I don't like it. It, oh. <laughs> it makes more sense in maybe the original idea of this movie where he's going to be the comedic relief. Mm-hmm. But when you make it more kiddie, he just becomes annoying. Because the entire movie's funny. Yes. Yeah. Huh. Gee, Only I wonder what that could be yeah. about. <laughs> mm. Troy, toys try to kill him. What? And okay. There's a bunch of toys outside. What creepy mm. person just has binoculars in their window just facing like, the Just street. at the ready? Just like ready to look yeah. at Yeah. <laughs> helicopter parents. That's, helicopter parents weren't a thing in 1998. Mm. Are you sure? Yeah. Hey, when, when, uh, when a mommy helicopter loves a daddy helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> Gets those rotors going. Mm. Get it out of how we... I like how there aren't any other ship hazards. It's like he just intentionally yeah. never opened the other one. There ones can be only one. Or fragged them. Just aggressively hunting. How else would anything get done? Yes. Yep. Didn't they, though? <laughs> I need a poop. Yeah. Yeah, that's the worst, worst uh, <laughs> Their kids are named Tim and Alan. They are. Jeez. Good catch. It <laughs> needs to be Al Borland. <laughs> Phil Hartman looks like old, fatter Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> he does. Wow. <laughs> wow, I can't. Wow, yeah, that's accurate. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> like if Ryan Reynolds' career never recovered past Green Lantern. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he looks exactly like that. He just took it so bad mm. and just started going to Golden <laughs> Corral twice a day. Just, just and I hop for mm. the breakfast and fourth meal. <laughs> just Phil Hartman just nailing his delivery. Yeah, so good. <laughs> 
<laughs> nah. Uh? I love the megaphone. Yeah. I'm so excited. The sickle? Right. We're in Children of the Corn territory now. Yeah. yeah. He who crawls behind the rose. Okay, again. Why is no one else in the neighborhood doing anything or showing yeah. any interest? Well, well, they're having sleepy time. Well, you know what? If I saw this outside, I'd be like, well, I'm just going to be quiet over here in my house. Yep. <laughs> I don't want anything like, to do well, with that. In in a couple scenes when they turn out when they turn the stereo all the way up, they're like they're like Phil Hartman right. or Yeah. Oh my god, though. The, the, yeah, just one lady pokes out and she's like, "Turn it down." More Spice Girls. Mm. Every soundtrack from mm. now on needs a Spice Girls song. Now. No, <laughs> accurate. Like those like that little sequence there is just like so strange to me. This is yeah. uh <laughs> like the movie this, has just gone is, completely off the yeah. rails at this point. I was a uh, I was a ginger spice and posh spice or not posh spice and a scary spice guy. Just for anyone wondering. Oh, thank you, Ryan. Yep, I know that was really just kind of weighing on your noodle. It was. I didn't have a favorite spice at that time. Mm. That's a propane tank on and a one. nail gun. Also, why is there a muzzle flash on a nail gun? Because they're flaming nails, apparently. They've, they've upped the ante on all this stuff, right? Right. I get it. I get it. Yep. That guy, as you were starting to point there, Max, that is Ron Howard and Clint Howard's father. Huh. Huh. Well, there are people that are just like, fucking guy. <laughs> yeah, it's like he's known for making he's, a like, yeah. loud amount of noise or whatever. Yeah. Which is why no one really cares what's going on. So. See, it's in the lore. Well, yep. up in the Lord. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? This is like so much. This is very dangerous. Also, I want to build one of those. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I have a potato gun. <laughs> I've we, we we've never launched it off. It's been uh, it's been a number of years. You, you have a potato gun that you've never fired. Hmm. You have a potato gun you've never fired. No, 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 no. I I haven't used it in years. Is what I'm saying. Oh, okay. I figure just... once I got past the age of 21 and can start drinking, I started doing less of that kind mm. of stuff. Does anyone else feel like Alan's parents are kind of way too old for him? Because he's like, what, 10? Yeah. And they look like they're in their 50s. Yeah, and he's like 15? I mean, fine. It's just not like... usual. Not, I mean... for the t- not for the era upon which this movie was made. Eh, all right. Now, yes, but back then, no. Yes. That's literally the name of the next pay-per-view. Oh, my God. <laughs> what? Great Balls of Fire. Great, what? The next, really? The next WWE pay-per-view is uh, Great Balls of Fire. It will already have happened by the time this episode is posted. But <laughs> Wait, I thought SummerSlam was There's the more cheese no, July one. It, yeah, it, it, all the grading. SummerSlam is in August, I Oh, okay. And yeah, so they changed the name um, of the, of the uh, pay-per-view for June to Great Balls of Fire. Wow. It's like the stupidest pay per view name I've ever heard. I'm, I'm trying to think of what, of what it was back in the day. It was maybe like it was No Mercy or Backlash or something like it's that. Like, I think it's, I honestly think it's Blood something. Mm, maybe. I don't know. I it's, don't, it's, it's, it's been a while. I'm a new wrestling fan, so I don't know what it was before. Yeah, you tell him, David Cross. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is actually some like legit electrical electrical knowledge or electric, what, yeah, electrical Enough. facts. Enough. Enough. <laughs> Enough for a movie. Way, <laughs> it's way more accurate than anything else in this movie. <laughs> as far as electrical stuff. This, I just... Right. They're gonna die. That's... An, that's an, If you watch that explosion, it looks like that's in reverse, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> Catchy. Yes. I get it. You want me to kill them with trees. Yeah. Trees don't generate electricity, Archer. <laughs> Dumbass. <laughs> All right, we're gonna have an ent moot. We're gonna have the Ents decide if they want to intervene. <laughs> <Right. Yeah. laughs> so, if this movie was made nowadays, there's no way that a Roomba isn't employed, right? Oh gosh, yeah. They they strap some knives to it, dude. Knife- yeah, yeah. Knife <laughs> Roombas. Have you guys seen that machine that's just a waving tentacle that has a knife in it? <laughs> It no, sounds like something worth and I'm building. terrified of oh, that yeah, idea. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, it's just a box with a tentacle on it, and a knife just goes... Burp, 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 so you can, like, not turn it off, because there's a fucking knife. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Good Mama job, Fimple. Mom. She was be she will be awesome at Wii Sports yeah. coming like five years. <laughs> yes. Get ready. Seven years? Yeah. Forget about it. Forget about it. Yeah. Wilson will take care of it. Shut up. Yeah. You're not wearing enough plaid <laughs> to do this. My plaid squares are much bigger than yours. Therefore, I am the dominant male. <laughs> There's no adults around here that can perform this action, Alan. <laughs> Crunch. <laughs> <laughs> they, this is the only house that applies, yeah. p- draws power from it. Mm. Oi, yeah. okay. Ryan, nope. comments? No, 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 no. There are issues with this. This is great. We, I was, I was yes. waiting for the Apocalypse Now references. And then this movie sent me into a Wikipedia slash internet hole about Apocalypse Now. What did you learn? Um, the work cut of that movie is five hours long. Wow. I did not know that. That yeah. is a good piece of trivia. I, it is available online. I good, love good. Apocalypse Now. Of course you do. Do you love do. five hours of it? I actually I haven't would watch seen five it hours of Apocalypse without now. the soundtrack or voice or voiceovers. Ooh, I might watch five hours of Apocalypse now. I might okay. actually watch that. We will we will get very drunk and watch five hours of Apocalypse now. <laughs> I love that movie because that is one of the most like surreal experiences it's I've ever so had. So weird, hmm. so good. Like there are certain movies where I'm like, I should not have watched this while I was sick, <laughs> or. All quiet on the western front, front yard, dude. Yard. Ah. Uh, uh, a scanner darkly <laughs> when I had like a pretty bad head cold. Yeah, no, that's not a, that's not a movie you should watch just in general. <laughs> Is that it the CGI good. one with Keanu Reeves? Yeah, yeah like the weird cell shading one. With that movie's it. cool. A, 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 um, a beardless Robert Downey Jr. Oof. He's good in that movie. <laughs> but no, I, I, I randomly watched Apocalypse Now like one... Saturday night after me and James had been hanging out. And it was just like, oh. Yeah. Apocalypse Now Redux or Redo. Yes, redo. That movie get, it starts off weird and then just falls into the surreal. Yeah. The why? Why with the muzzle flash? Yeah. Apparently, Lawrence Fishburne got hooked on heroin yeah. out of that movie. Hmm. Could see that. And he was like 15 when he filmed it. Linda. I love that they're just like around. <laughs> Could wake up with XM now. Right. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, gotta give it to Archer for that one. You got an emissary away there, Archer. Yeah. Yep. I'm glad to see that this, uh, that gun has from the Arnold Schwarzenegger school of ammunition. Yep. That it's just always there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There yep, it is. Yep, Sanctuary. Yep. The CGI looks kind of bad that was here. That great. I, it's because there's so much of it on screen at once. And I think it's the lighting. There's a lot more yeah. bright lights in there. Right? Yeah, the, yeah. It's tough to match the lighting because it's, it's a this nighttime looks fine shot. looks because it's moving so fast. Yeah. yeah. It's a nighttime shot. There's external artificial lighting in the house lights, but there's also fires all over the place. So yep. it's, it's tough to match. When you do the rendering, I just what <laughs> I want all of these machines. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Brian, we're gonna come over next week and we're gonna find half of these already built in your <laughs> yep. garage. Battle which, which yeah, may, that might make this our last you know living podcast. So it's been nice knowing <laughs> you guys. Yeah. Uh, maybe it, maybe it is time for some posthumous uh, <laughs> fame. I don't know. That's a brutal yeah. scene, right? Yeah, there. the fact that they like, I have a feeling like in some cuts you see the 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 nails go through them. Mm-hmm. I think you probably do. It wouldn't be surprised me if they CGI out those them. nails. Yeah. yeah, I just think the fact that they put them in the front, like to die, like in the foreground, is right. like it's a, yeah, and shot like in the back. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's a war movie cut. That's exactly yeah. what yeah. it is. There, that's you see that in a lot of old style old style war movies because they didn't use a lot of blood or anything back then so they really had to have like the the front in action like oh i've been shot and i'm falling this is the second movie in a row where someone's taken down by a net gun it is 
And he is far more convincingly taken down He's by the like, handgun oh my than Arnold Schwarzenegger, who just kind of like is falling to the ground by the time the net gets around him. <laughs> yeah. I design toys for a living, so I can. <laughs> he set went to up MIT. Bombs. I assume they do this on the regular. You, can, yeah, you know, you like could just perfect. buy an MIT shirt, right? <laughs> no, uh, yeah. no, he went to MIT. <laughs> is there anything like more faux pas than like wearing college attire to a college you didn't go to? I saw someone at Whole Foods who had a shirt that was like. We live in a shirt. state where people wear Michigan stuff all the time. Yeah, that's true. I <laughs> forgot about They're that. They're like, I love football. Yeah. Which is like totally chill, but like, it's weird to me that like the actual students of the colleges are competitive. Mm hmm. I don't get it. Mm. It's beyond me. I mean, I don't understand either considering I went to Michigan Tech, but the people sitting to your left and right both, both went to Michigan State. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, nothing about what this child is doing is okay. It's not safe. No one ever do this ever. Yeah, this is horrible. I do like this idea, though. Yeah, the anti-aircraft gun? Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. Not enough flack. <laughs> Who are you talking to? I don't know. Yeah, he has no inner monologue. True. No. Yeah, he just says everything he's thinking. Frank Miller wrote him. <laughs> <laughs> There's not enough, like, blood filling the gutters for or ogling of well there already was ogling of female butts oh you little yep. bastard <laughs> yeah. hand did you see that hand yeah like, yeah, yeah cg hand <laughs> oh it's a glove it's chip a glove. chuckling is okay. a great name yeah. <laughs> chuckle chips chick chuckles chuckles worth Holy crap, Archer, you can actually do something. Yeah. Archer's a badass. Roop. Credit. He's just a late bloomer. I thought this was cool, actually. Yeah. Yeah, that's neat. Whee! <laughs> I was really disappointed that he just gets the crap kicked out of him here, though. <laughs> I mean, you're programmed to lose, fine, but mm. don't also be programmed to be a bitch. God. <laughs> The the knife handling. The, yeah, the, the little like it. scalpel. Yep. That's a good line, too. <laughs> a program to lose. It's a weird self-awareness thing that the toys they know, know exactly what they're programmed for. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's just strange that they know that they're toys. Yeah. But they still need to fight. Yeah. Like, I think at the point where you realize that your toys are, like, like, Buzz Lightyear is like, oh, yeah. sick. Mm -hmm. And then, like, they're like, we're toys, but we still need to do murder. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like this was kind of like Pun. the uh, the Toy Story for teens, almost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not good. Right. <laughs> Not good at all. No. So why, why 4 Plastic does this? <laughs> because it has a metal frame inside? Inside. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the plastic should insulate the. This is true. That sickle is still out there, by yeah. the way. Yep. That's really scary. And a giant yes. knife. That's so scary. <laughs> any scene that any scene that makes me think about uh, they're just dead, dead, dead alive. The yeah, I'm completely Ships okay. Of, of of like yeah, they're they can think and feel, man. Yep. Yeah, if, if a scene makes me fondly look back to memories of a zombie horde being mutilated by a lawnmower. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Directed by Peter Jackson. Right. Yes. Back in his I'm still living in New Zealand <laughs> days. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, he's like still going. Yeah. Hmm, that's, a, that's about right. <laughs> Whee! Bam. I liked Phil Hartman's little phrase about like, I've done this before. <laughs> yeah. Because it seems like, you know, I totally believe he's Overloaded the, uh, the transformer. The transformer, yeah. So there it is. The Wilhelm scream. Mm -hmm. There are. I think there's multiple Wilhelm screams in this movie. Actually, this CG looks really bad. And also, this goes on for a hundred years. Yeah. Yep. Well, that that one particularly looked bad. For some reason. Yeah. Yeah. That one looked particularly bad because they have to do a lot of textures with like the the, the burn, burn damage, smoke, yeah. smokiness. He's got the barbecue tongs. 
Man, she's got a whole bunch of outfits. She's pulling off the woman in black right now. Yep. That is a lot of damage to that yeah, roof. Yeah, I don't know how that roof fell. I don't know either. <laughs> and she speaks pretty evenly for doing those exercises the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> if you look at the uh, Globotech sticker on the helicopter, it's not put on that well. It's got a bunch of ripples in it when they show the close up. Oh, out. really? Yeah. I'm watching for mm, it. I don't know. Maybe it's after he takes off. It might be after he takes off. Mm. <laughs> the delivery guy. <laughs> The very short delivery man. Mm. I still can't believe that's Dennis Leary. Yeah. Anti-capitalist action. <laughs> oh no! Do, do portable check printing machines exist? Because the freaking uh, Kugo Shuga or whatever the fuck from Double Dragon did the same thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so rough. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, firemen. Was yeah. that really necessary? Firemen are dicks. <laughs> Just going for it, man. I'm going to use a, this to buy a bunch of nose cleaner. Yeah. I'm rich now. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to buy my own Toys truck. Toys is hell. hell. Wow, I, uh, I'm having some of my world turned upside down right now. I thought Gil in Finding Nemo was voiced by Dennis Leary. Oh, did you? It was Willem Dafoe. Huh. All these what? years. According to IMDb. Huh. That line's like, a little too real. I'm going to tell yep, you that. Yeah. <laughs> I think the rebel. I think the rebels in South America line would have been a lot more appropriate had it been the Terminator cast, or excuse me, Predator cast. Yeah, um, it's it seems weird that the very beginning of this movie touts him as like a major U.S. arms dealer, and then yeah. he talked about selling this stuff to rebels in South America as opposed to just like no, 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 no. I think it was more like they will use this against the rebels in South America. Oh. I oh. I didn't take it that way. No, that's because no, because it was contact the the military. I know some rebels in South America who will find this. Yeah. All right, look at the sticker, everyone. Dude, that's so sticker. funny. Uh, this would have made a hell of a commercial. Uh, he says. I look at those ripples. Bullshit. Yeah. As yeah. Like, that big giant one in the middle. In a giant toy commercial. Yeah. Like, yep. Hey. Plot relevant. Yep. Yeah. Satellite dish. Yeah. This may be the most scientifically accurate part of this whole movie, actually. <laughs> the satellite dish um, preventing the EMP wave? Not preventing it, but attenuating it enough to their, that it might protect them. However, the Transformers blowing up would likely not do anything at all to these toys. <laughs> what has That's worse, a weird shot, also. What has worse EMP technology, Ryan? This or War of the Worlds? Um, the Steven Spielberg War yeah. of the Worlds. Yeah, I don't remember much of that movie, so I can't comment. Okay. I don't remember war. I don't remember EMPs being a thing. In yeah, that they movie. employ EMPs at the very beginning of the movie against cities, which is why no one can escape. Oh, oh that's right. Cause, like, yeah, he's like, ah, that's solenoid. It's, 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 check the solenoid. Well, other things in your car would be fried before that solenoid. Yeah. Or whatever. <laughs> that's more alien technology. So I'll wave my hand. No, at that. I'm more of the the. The solenoid comment because it's like, oh, this all my electric, all the yeah, le everything else is fine. My cars are fried. Just fix the solenoid. This, C this CG is getting bad again. That yeah. stop motion, yeah, that, that stop motion weird. on a green screen. Yeah, bad haloing. Bad haloing. Yeah, that's CGI. Yes. Bad CG. <laughs> like the CG has definitely gotten worse in the third act. Maybe it's because you're you're seeing the entirety. Like that that was this is miniatures. Yeah. Yeah. This is just puppets. The 
the boat just tips over and they fry it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is terrible. You might not find Gorgon. You might not. They just go down the river and get caught in the reservoir. Yeah. They go into one of those big holes in the middle of the reservoir. Yeah. <laughs> Hmm. Have, either of you, have any of you guys seen Carboys? No. Carboys? No. Okay, I'll link you guys to it later. <laughs> All right. Okay. I, Alan has his waiters on, so good on you, Alan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he came prepared. This is such a 90 shot. A boy in the woods with a sweater on against the river. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm thinking Homeward Bound is like appearing, is filming like up, up river. Ship. And then down river, they're filming a river runs through it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it was a great movie. It's a good movie. My hair is parted more to the left now. Oh, I had I'm a better boy. And I'm not happy about yeah. it. I had the haircut as an adult. So. <laughs> well, <laughs> as an adult yeah, female, do. it looks fine. <laughs> yeah. As a tween male, not so much. <laughs> ha. Him doing that up there would mess with the boat. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Good pull, considering Titanic just I, came out last. I, I kind of appreciate that it ends there. Yeah, I mean they don't go back to Alan and Kirsten Dunst being like, "Oh, smoochy smoochy yeah, up in the true. room." And all that I mean, they got crap. their smoochy smoochy in, yeah. which was fine. Yes. So they even say original cast members are like, thirty dozen. <laughs> Yay! Oh yeah, voice what? members of Spinal Tap. <laughs> <laughs> that was that, that. That's where I'm like, I know the that's like, organizer amazing. from something, but Spinal that's Tap, so like, it escaped my mind. <laughs> All right. Any, oh my gosh. Oh no. Oh, hey, we we we're gonna hear the remix. All right. So the let's the listen subtitles to this. Titles of um, Wars playing said Henry Rollins, Tom Morello, <laughs> Bun- Bone Thugs and Harmony. I really hope I can find this disc. It's this is this is the ninetieth thing ever. <laughs> Listen. Wow! Oh this is... no! Yeah, I was expecting more from this. <laughs> it just sounds like a heavier version of like they're trying to they're trying to emulate the original one with this with this cover. Right, let's see if if the rapping gets in, and then you get the Henry Rollins eventually. Yeah, I'm getting there, getting there. No, no, I so don't know, is. man. It's not doing it for me. Listen to me. Mm-hmm. Good God. Oh, huh. there okay. it is. Oh, boy. Yes. I uh, Full disclosure, this was part of my workout jam for a while. <laughs> oh, no. By a while, this, do you mean like until track? like last week? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, okay. Well, that wraps up another episode of Good Brews, Bad Views. Um, so, as always, view again, brew again. I'll start with James. Mr. Um, James. I would brew again both of the beers that I drank. <laughs> Excellent. Um, well, the the pool time makes sense because I actually purchased that for our Memorial Day barbecue a few weeks You ago. drank most of that. Mm, yes. Most of them that you well, brought. I did bring them. You did bring them. <laughs> and, we, and we were there for a, a majority while. of that day. Yeah. Um, I really like the M43 a whole lot. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's a good one. I would like to find that more places because I enjoy it. Uh, yep. Rather, it's 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 rather expensive. I think it's like yeah, it's four like, bucks a can. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. It was like I think thirteen dollars for a four pack, but they're sixteen ounce cans. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, there's a lot of beer actually there. Um, I I really like unfiltered beer. I've been enjoying Hefeweizens for a long time, so that's a style that fits right in with everything else I enjoy. Um. You know, as as fun as this movie is, if it's if I found it meandering around, maybe I'd put it on. But my biggest problem with this movie is there's not enough. Like, I want more. It takes a long time to get where it's going. Yeah, it, it's want... it, it's about a good hour before it gets into like the crazy like Mad Max. Yeah, I watched the last half of this movie without a problem. I just don't right. care about the first half of the movie. Yeah. Leading up to it. From when from when Kirsten Dunst gets captured, like onwards. Yeah, yeah, I'd watch that move that part of the movie. That's I enjoy that. I enjoy that. The rest is you need it for the movie. I don't think you need as much of it for the movie, but I don't care. So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Ryan. Uh yeah, same. I really like this beer a lot. Um it's super good. <laughs> I would drink this again. I might actually seek this one out 
Um, I which, might be able to find us some more. Yeah, if, we're gonna if we want some more. If you do find yes. some more, I'll float you some dough, some <laughs> yeah, dough dollars. Yeah. Um, same thing about the movie. Um, it doesn't really get interesting until you know the latter the latter parts of it and when stuff starts to, to, to really kind of jump the shark a bit. But uh, yeah, it's still a lot of fun though. I mean, this isn't a terrible movie. It's it's one of the better bad movies that we've done, I think. But um. Yeah, a lot of endearing stuff, a lot of really interesting character design, some cool effects. It's it, it's fun. All right. Um, as far as I go, yeah, M forty three has been one of the few beers I've I've that that's definitely been on my to to find list. You know, like searching out what bre- what um, brew pubs had it or what stores had it, and I just you know randomly stumbled across three cans, and I'm like drinking this on the podcast, and Excellent. um, uh. It's different because this is like this is an, uh, this is a unfiltered IPA, so IPAs usually aren't they aren't usually unfiltered like that. They're usually you know nope. fairly clear beers. Which my my old joke was like I don't drink clear beers, but I'm like wait I drink a lot of IPAs. But um no like 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 we were saying earlier, this looks exactly like a uh, the beer mosas we had it does. a couple weeks back. Yeah, um almost tastes like it, but much better. Um. It's just it's one of the best beers I've had in a while, and I've been drinking a Wait. lot of beers. Oh my god, oh, there's a stinger, stinger. St- or oh, blooper? there's bloopers. Oh god. Oh, okay, I was like, holy shit. No, there's been at least <laughs> like three movies that we've discovered. Aww. Oh yeah, for Phil. Oh, Phil. Oh, yeah, bye, Phil Herman. There's been at least three movies where we discover there's like a, a secret stinger, including the Super Mario Brothers movie. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Go, go look that up. Yeah, a was. stinger, a, a like really subtle stinger at the end of the Running Man. Yeah, because the I'm, credits change to they actually do the oh, outro, the, the outro stuff from a game show. All right. Yeah, right. yeah. So, um, mm-hmm. so yeah. Uh, as far as this movie goes, probably not. Like, it's been one of the better movies we've done, but I'm not going to go to it unless I turn the TV on. And I hear war playing yeah. as like chainsaw car comes through yeah. a garage door, yeah. and then I'll turn it off after. <laughs> like that'll do, car- that'll do movie, that'll, that'll do. do. <laughs> so Jess, uh, for me, I would definitely drink this beer again. Um, the beer being the M forty three. Yeah, the M forty three. I switched. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yep. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was really delicious. Good. For, you like, what? Do you like the? The fruitiness of it, or do you like the? Um... It's like. Or what about you? What, yeah, what about you like? So like, I kind of like that. I guess. Okay. Uh, hmm. I don't know, and like, it doesn't taste like fermented as much, I guess. Okay, it's um according to the can, it's about <laughs> six point eight percent, which is kind of up there as far as beer goes, but it doesn't taste very alcoholic. Like, no. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm trying to think. I'm thinking back of some of the heavier like. Obviously, nine or ten percent ABV beers we've had on here, but no, this is this is a very drinkable beer. Yeah, this is super good. Have you have you had any sour beers yet, Jess? Mm-mm. You might actually yeah. like those. That's what I was we'll trying. That's what I was trying to give her with um, Pool Time. It's it's a Bell's beer that tries to go into sours without being sours. Sours like IPAs are very mm-hmm. much like you love them or you hate them yeah. because they have so much like non beer flavor to them. Right. And Bell's hasn't gotten into actually making sours in comparison to some of the other Michigan breweries. But yeah. it's, it's a very niche style that I think they're almost too big to actually produce on a large scale because of their fickleness as far as as far as consumers go. Yeah. And so, but um, sours might be something more of up here because they have a lot of fruitier, yeah, non beery flavors. The the one we had recently was it Southern Tier? Is that who made that one? The cherry yeah. goza, the cherry goza, the, the briny melon goza, or the critter list would be by shorts. strong. And then I starters. actually had shorts. Um, their it was their anniversary sour, so mm-hmm. I think what, that was what it was labeled as. So I think it was just their sour that they were putting out for the year. Mm-hmm. It was really really good last night. Okay. Which one? Right. Do you remember what it was called? I don't know the name because they just had it as the anniversary, so I haven't looked it up. I don't know if anniversary is a sour that they make or if it's just. I know the the beer. You know they're releasing a beer every month right now because they're. It's their 20th anniversary 25th. this year. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I think what it is is just it was it's whatever the sour that they released for this month is. Oh, okay. Okay. I'll, I'll look up the name and we'll we'll put it up. Yeah. But. So yeah, Jess, we will send you more sour beers. And sour beers are definitely a beer that's kind of grown on me, just as I've had more. Um, like last, and I think with any kind of beer, 
you need to be, try a wide variety of wide variety of what that style has before you can be like, oh, I don't like this. Like for the longest time, I like I generally don't like pale ales. Pale ales are kind of like the in between between like an IPA and a regular ale. Like to me, I've always been like the beer is not committing to one style or the other. Recently, I've had two very good pale ales. One by Three Floyds called um, I don't know, it's not Three Floyds, but it's called Zombie Dust. I can't remember what the uh, brewery was. And another was called um, Empire by uh, Batch Brewery downtown in Detroit on their little menu on the uh, on their um, brew pub. Like the serving size wasn't at at for the sixteen ounce or an ATST for the four ounce pour. So I I very much appreciated the committal to that beer. <laughs> but then I met a Cicerone last week and I told her I'm like oh I'm not a big fan of uh, pale ales and uh, I've got a number of pale ales coming my way from her because she was like quote unquote offended by that statement so <laughs> but no that's with with any beer just you got to keep trying and you'll probably find something that yeah i mean you maybe enjoy. i'm just like a person who only likes like 2% of beers right right <laughs> and that's fine that's fine yeah it's it's more about like just knowing what works for you well i mean it's not fine but we'll tolerate you <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i definitely uh, i don't I deliver in the beer talk department as much yeah. Yeah. yeah we're all learning as well we're all at different levels right now <laughs> But uh, I almost feel like even though I really enjoyed watching Small Soldiers, I'm all set yeah. on watching it again. That's mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like it wouldn't benefit from further viewing. I think that's probably yeah, fair. That's like, it's, it's good, and it's I mean, over, and it's done. Yeah, unless we're going to sit down and blueprint how to make all those sweet machines. Yeah, yeah. So that would be the only uh, reason to rewatch it is to, like, Get the like, just exhausted. Like, what exactly would be used in those? And, like, figure out how to put like okay, the what is the this. what is the use of the cheese grater? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't want to actually know. That's too much. That's too far. <laughs> the only thing I can think of is use it like as a weird like chariot scythe where you like do a drive by cheese grating on someone, oh. uh. or you just you just affix it to a a, a reciprocating saw, and oh. just like oof, no oh. thanks. Yeah, no thanks to like. All of the ways that they destroyed, or like an electric turkey cutting knife. And... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, that wraps up another episode of Good Brews, Bad Views. Uh, Jess, where can people find you online if they want to see pictures of cats and your drawings <laughs> and such? I, I'm on Twitter at azaxi a z a x x i i, um, and also on Tumblr, the same name. Um, okay. So yeah. All right. As always, uh, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, send us your hate mail at goodbrewsbadviews uh, dot gmail at gmail dot com, and uh, as always, please watch and drink responsibly. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Goodbye. Bye bye.